this phrase right here. Um, this story, uh, your life, the unfolding of history and the universe is not about you. It's about him, Amen. right? And so when you make it about you, you get crushed under the weight of it. He's saying the story of the universe is actually about me, which means like you wonder why when you're reading your Bible, like you're sitting there trying to do your devotions and you're reading Leviticus and if it's not about you in seven verses, you're like, you get bored. It's because God is like, hey, I need to do 20 chapters in Exodus talking about the size of curtains because my story is actually not about you. It's about me. And if you would just chill for two seconds. See, what is it about us that wants to make everything so quickly about us or we zone out? Again, I don't want to be offensive. It's the immature to do that. Think about it. It's like kids. Have you ever met a child? These things are narcissistic to the core. <laughs> These things are all about themselves. All about me, all about me. Give me what I want. Give me, like, literally, I remember uh, our family went to Disneyland a few years ago. And uh, we were standing in this line. And my, my oldest daughter, Sienna, she's like, it's a two-hour wait, two-and-a-half-hour wait for this ride, but I really want to go on it. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to do that. And then, and then like this consciousness came into me and it was like, no, you should do it. Because what you'll do is you'll model selflessness to her. Then she can do this for her kid one day and be a selfless parent. So uh, I was like, okay, great. So I go, okay, honey, I'll do it. So I'm sitting in this line for two and a half hours and my phone ran out of battery. So I'm just standing there like a psychopath, just looking at people. Just... So she shows up. It's like the 80s. We're just talking to each other. It was crazy. <laughs> so she shows up after two and a half hours. Oh, dad, dad, thank you so much. I'm like, honey, you know the reason I did this? I did this because one day you're going to do this for your children. And she looked at me. She's like, no, I won't. My husband will. <laughs> and I'm like, how, how long does it take these women to learn these shrewd, serpenty little ways through life? <laughs> it's just a thing. So so like, but that's, that's human heart, right? We are narcissistic to the core. We are all about us. In the Latin phrase, phrase that Luther uses, we are homo incurvatus, humankind turned in, curved in on themselves. That's what we're about. We're about us. And, 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 and God has done a thing where it's like, no, no, no. You got to understand that actually this story is about me. And one of the difficulties about making it about me is, and, and one of the things that we have to actually hold on to and be very... We have to make our lives about God and not ourselves because when we fail and make mistakes, that will mean people won't actually walk away from the faith. They'll just realize that we're just stumbling along as beggars telling another beggar where to get bread versus the hero of the story. We have a generation of people walking away from Christianity because we've made Christianity about Christians versus Christ and they look in and go, well, they failed. They're hypocrites. I'm out. There was a study done uh, a few years ago about Christians and non-Christians and the activities that they had done in the last 30 days. And they asked them a series of questions and they said, you tell us yes or no to these questions. And the, the rates were exactly the same for Christians and non-Christians with these 10 activities. Uh, gambling, visiting a pornographic website, taking something that didn't belong to them, saying mean things behind someone's back, consulting a medium or a psychic. Among, like, this is, like, I know this is California. I don't know if I need to tell you this, but guys, if you're a Christian, you don't go to a psychic, yeah. right? Like, who are you so entitled that you think somebody's supposed to tell you exactly what the future is? And we do this in Christianity, too. Who am I supposed to marry? I don't know if I'm supposed to marry. I need to see their name in my alphabet soup, and I need God to tell me what's the girl's name, what's the guy's name. It's like, hey, Serve her like Christ served the church. Good night. That's all he's going to tell you. He ain't going to spell out and give you signs in the sky about everything you're supposed to do in life. You know where that comes from? A generation of entitlement. You think God is supposed to tell you everything. He doesn't. There is a gap between life and what's coming, and that gap is called faith. And he doesn't give you every detail. He's not going to tell you everything, 
But that's what drives people to go to these psychics and mediums and say, I want to know my future. I want to know what's what. And then, literally Christians are doing this. So vid- visiting a psychic, having a physical fight or abusing someone, using illegal drugs, saying to something that, someone that that's not true, getting back at someone for something they did, consuming enough alcohol to be considered legally drunk. No statistical difference between Christians and non-Christians, 30 days, 10 activities. The only activity that was different was that Christians recycled less than non-Christians, <laughs> which as a Canadian is extremely offensive. That you Americans, you guys don't know, right? Like in, in Canada, we got like five different bins, right? We're recycling. We got the bin for like the banana peels. Then we got the bin for like the little cap off the soda can. I mean, we got to do work. I come down here, you guys are like, yeah, there's that bin. Don't worry, someone sorts it later. No, they don't. All right? It's just going in a big hole, guys. Oh, I'm sure someone's sorting it. They ain't. America. <laughs> There's a generation of people that are lost because they mistook this and thought we were supposed to be talking about us. This is a story about the righteousness and faithfulness of God to the world in the midst of our disobedience. It's not about us. 